stillness. A solitary second of stillness, punctuated by moments, memories of greatness, of clashing shields and war-torn battlefields. And then... A shining moment in the void. First one, then another and another until the entire sky lights. There are a million lights, a million faces, a million stars piercing the dark, a million of you, wherever you are, sharing the passion and joy of every single second. We have never been more apart, yet we are together. A myriad of stars in the dark, all as one. We are here. And we are EU. That is one damn tanky crocodile. He's going for the triple. He's going for the quadra. Come on, And across spring, we have shared in battles and glory, in the elation of victory and the pain of defeat. From outplays to misplays, we have seen giants fall low. Excel on the Nexus Towers will defeat G2. And new names shine brighter than ever before. Zanzar is here. The taxes. The IRS has been evaded. El Yoya. He will survive another day. One by one, we watched their lights extinguish until we were left with our final six. And through trials and torment, through ecstasy and exaltation, we reached our destination. Two teams, a million lights, all waiting for today. And it all comes down to this. In the fight for glory, there is no relenting, there is no stepping back, there is no second chance. So just one question remains. Who's going to claim the crown? It has been six years, seven months, and 25 days since a team other than G2 and Fnatic have raised the LEC trophy. In fact, we have never had a final without those two teams. But today, today we get to witness something brand new. Today we get to witness something marvelous, something magnificent. Today we get to witness history. So without much further ado, let's get to introducing your teams. In the top lane for the Mad Lions is the Turkish stage beast himself, Armut. Mickey goes all the way forward thanks to the Q. Manages to knock out the ulti for now. Mickey's going low. Manages to catch the Drake. Oh, it's a huge no! down Armut. He may have just done it. He set up one, two, three quick kills for the Mad Lions. For Rogue in the top lane, seven years in the making, now in his first ever final, Oduwamne! Now on the back line, Neon diving in with the Killer Instinct and immediately it's jumped on and Neon is down! Trimby with a Magnus Ooh. Storm and here is Odo! Feel the power of the slicing Maelstrom! For Mad Lions in the jungle, it's the Spanish prodigy and rookie of the season, El Yoyo! Odo drops down the dark in blade as Armut dashes forward once again. Cyclone is a few seconds away! Here it comes oh, Odo, yeah. bringing the thunder to Rogue! Two more kills to the Mad Lion. A Polish powerhouse and pathing king in the jungle for Rogue. Inspired! Vitality have been able to peel for now, but Rogue are not yet done. Inspired, the Whoa! flag and drag and the cataclysm. He extended it with the flash and there's nothing Vitality can do. Controlling the rift from the mid lane for the Mad Lions, it's Humanoid! Push forward. Kaiser's Kaiser. looking for it. Flare. That'll slow and load. Shockwave! The shockwave is huge! Humanoid may have just done it! In the mid lane for Rogue, the ginger god himself, it's Larson! 
Larson Larsa now TPing into the middle of two members of G2. Still, G2 are going to back. They don't want to get this one. Oh, God, that is zero damage. He just one shots immediately. In the bot lane for the Mad Lions, he's Kazi by name, but crazy in lane. It's Kazi. Miskew's locked, left alone without the rest of the team. A Storm's already the killer instinct from Kazi. The double he's kill a for the Kaiser. In the bot lane for Rogue, it's been three years since his last finals, but he's finally back to fight for the title, Han Summer! And the swipe, Han Summer will pick up the kill onto Al Yoyo after losing Trimbeam. Here comes Lawson, he picks up the second, that's Han Summer with the double. Kaiser's the next one to fall, a triple kill for Athelios! For Mad Lions in the support role, in the year of support dip, there's one name that reigns above them all, it's Kaiser! 3,800 HP and Madline starts to back away. The Unstoppable Onslaught is not just yet used. It's not available. It's on cooldown from Inspice. Oh, Kaiser! Back. Fantastic engage from Kaiser. Gets a three-man knockup. And from the Ultra League to top of the league in less than a year, for Rogue, their support, Trimby! There's a TP in from Odo. Gets a lot of damage. Bell comes out. Oh, oh Trimby! Time. Trimby with the Magnet Storm engage. He sets it up. And now we stand on a precipice. Mad Lions on one side, Rogue on the other, and all of the rest of us just here for the ride. Europe, Twitch chat, give your hands together for your finalists. And there's one last thing to do before we dive on into the finals. A great series demands great casters, and I've got three of the best for you. Guys, take it away. Oh, thank you very much, Medic. From one great caster to another, it is an absolute pleasure to be here for this series between Mad Lions and Rogue. You've heard it a few times today. You might hear it a few more, but a new champion is going to be crowned today. Although I promise we'll keep the uh, crown metaphors to a minimum on this one. Yeah, that's the camera. Yeah, Larson. <laughs> Thank you, Larson. Thank you, Larson. <laughs> Showing up a little bit early. Studio. There's the uh, the junior god. Uh, the man himself. <laughs> the man himself. We're going to be talking about him a lot today alongside the other players. Um, and the reality is there's a ton of pressure. There's a ton of stakes. It is a huge and momentous occasion. But I think right now we're all just very excited to be in the studio with players for an LEC final after what feels like an eternity without them. Especially with Mad versus Rogue, two of these teams that have been forever battling to get up to the top. And now they've surpassed the other teams, the G2s, the Fanatics that were above them. Now it is winner take all. We have a new champion today. Yeah, and I feel like Rogue was always at one step ahead, right? Finishing first in summer. And then even now coming tight tie with G2 coming into the playoffs. And then Mad Lions got the best of them. We're in the finals. Ten players. What, that one team's going to raise the trophy, and it's going to be the first time for that team and for those players. It's absolutely crazy that this is the route that we've taken. And of course, you talk about Rogue kind of being one step ahead in the regular season, but it's Mad Lions who rose up and oppressed us so much. Remember, they beat Rogue last time they went head to head. So it's going to be a story of adaptation this time around. I think game one might be the last time we see anything similar to their previous series, because today I'm expecting innovation. I'm expecting crazy new picks and new strategies. And we have to remember for the Mad Lions, while this is a very neck and neck matchup, they got the luxury of watching Rogue all day day yesterday to learn every strategy that they could bring to the table. Yeah, and for Rogue, Rogue have to spend one week prepping for two teams. Obviously, have to send so much going up against G2 yesterday, now up against the Mad Lions. I'm curious uh, what they're going to have in store for us, because we look at the last time these two teams faced off earlier in the playoffs, and it was the Senna Chogath in the bot lane mm -hmm. for Rogue. Mad Lions had the Jinx as the counter. Back then, that was a surprise pick. That felt like it came out of nowhere. Now it is known, and that's going to have a lot of effect on this series. Yeah, and that's what uh, I think Mad Lions are all about, and Rogue were kind of following in a sense, you know, Mad Lions always playing these scaling picks and Rogue just playing a lot of early game, you know, they dominate the early game and that's how they snowball the game. We'll have to see how these two teams fight off against each other because I like the early game coming out from Rogue, but then you've got El Yoyo on the other side who loves his early game champs as well. Well, and additionally, El Yoyo, the guy who's willing to give up maybe some of those CS leads that Inspired has been so known to build just to gank his lanes to get his lanes ahead. And what's impressive about it is he's just so successful. He's not the first guy that's tried ganking lens instead of farming the jungle. <laughs> he just seems to make it work every single time. And that's exactly the kind of approach it feels like you need against 
against Rogue in a sense, because mm -hmm. uh, I like to say there's three things that Rogue always look for in a draft, always look for in a game plan. It's usually going to be some form of scaling element, likely for Larson. You know, the Azir, the Corky of old has some other champions in his wheelhouse too, of course. But then also, you want to have strong early priority lanes. Even with the scaling picks, they often are winning out their lanes. And then a fast clearing jungler for Inspired, where he can go on the offensive. In and the, the most important thing to me there is the priority lanes, right? That's what gets your jungler ahead. That's the kind of play style Rogue have. And that's similar to what you saw against G2. They had the prior lanes in the best of ones throughout the whole regular split, but G2 found the ganks. And when you have those prior lanes, once they lose them, it's really difficult to play the game. Yeah, and El Yoya showed in the last series uh, creative early pathing, dodging away from vision that, of course, Inspired was putting down in the jungle. And it was that sort of surprise factor against sometimes the more predictable nature of Inspired's pathing that helped Madlines get out to a good lead. Yeah, and vision's the key thing, right? We even saw it in the G2 series yesterday. Inspired spots Yankos one second on the map. He already knows his clear for the next two minutes, takes away his camps, gets level leads, controls the whole map, and that's something you can't give Inspired. You can't give him free information because he's one of the best junglers in the league when it comes to getting that advantage. Yeah, and if he's tracking your enemy jungler, it means the rogue lanes can always know when to press their advantages. Because you know they love to push in the early lane phase, but we also know they play some of the strongest weak side game in the league with Odwamne on the top side soaking up so much pressure, often making sure that teams aren't able to find him on the early gank. So any information that Inspired gets, he will be able to control control the early game and know exactly what's going on. And I think it's no surprise that we are looking at the early game, right? Because it is crazy to think back to that series and realize that Mad Lions were down on average 1.6K at 15 minutes and that they were the ones winning the games, that it was a 3-1 series despite those early game struggles. A credit, of course, and you heard it on the desk, to how incredible Mad Lions are at team fighting, but with Rogue leveling up, with Rogue taking down G2, can they continue to have these early games where they're falling behind in gold, where they're letting these uh, leads fall away and you're seeing massive CS leads across all the Rogue lanes? Yeah, and I mean, for, for the side of Mad Lions, you have to look at, too, coming in from the upper bracket. Of course, they also made huge improvements in the offseason. Both teams ch making changes in the top lane, making changes in the jungle for the Mad Lions. Big effects coming in here and coming into these two organizations' first ever finals. And now it is time. Picks and bands for the first game. Rogue versus Mad Lions. And gentlemen, as we get into picks and bands, no doubt that we are all <laughs> pumped as hell to be here. But we take it down a notch. We look at the strategies that are going to be coming out from both sides, and we can look at the expectations ahead. Because while the player stories are fantastic, at the end of the day, you have to find the win here, and it's going to come down a lot to innovation in the draft already. Nocturne, first ban from Mad Lion. Yeah, I mean, of course, we know that Armut, big fan of the NAR, and Odwamne took that Nocturne into the top lane. It's a sweet counter matchup for it yesterday. Uh, so I like to see that ban come from Mad Lions. The other champions I want to look at, Jinx for Karzi in the bottom lane, potentially for Hansama, as well as the Senna combinations we know Rogue love to run. And the other thing I'm looking at is mid lane, right? We saw a lot of Tristan and Lucian Orianna priority, right? And I think Humanoid has the most Orianna games. He has the most success on Orianna. I'd be surprised to see Rogue give that away to them as you see a Thresh ban. And at the start of playoffs, we saw a lot of bot lane bans. The Senna, the Thresh, the Tam, all these kind of things being taken away alongside things like the Jinx and the Kai'Sa and the Rel. We'll have to see how this draft progresses because all the mid laners are open right now. And those are the priorities alongside the junglers, right? Like the Lilias, the Hecrims, the Udyrs, and the Polybears. And it would not surprise me to see a lot of these power junglers get left open as I say that. El Yoya and the Mad Lion decide to ban away the Lilia. So now with Tristana banned, we have Orianna, we have Lucian, a couple of mid lane power picks up. Yeah, you've got Orianna and Lucian, you've got Hecarim as well, and you've got Udyr. So the jungle trade off and there's a mid lane trade off here no matter what. But I think if Mad Lions take the Orianna, Rogue will take away the Hecarim to make sure they don't have that kind of wombo. And if they pick up the Udyr, maybe Rogue want to take away the Lucian. Yeah, and I mean, this makes sense for El Yoya. Of course, we know he likes to get into lanes a little bit more aggressively than Inspired. We know Udyr super fast jungle clear as well. So a very strong power pick to put the rookie of the split on in the jungle here for Matt. Rogue taking their time on this response, not sure exactly what they want to go to here. Now, of course, you talk about the Orion, you talk about the Lucian. Last time in the series, a lot of people uh, questioning Larson's focus on something like the Azir. This time, though, it will be the Orion. It has updated his champion pool a little bit to suit the playoffs. And we've seen Orion be incredibly oppressive, still has a fantastic win rate so far in the playoffs overall. And Larson, 
If he can make an impact on this champion, especially alongside Aurel, that is some team fight combo action. Yeah, I really like what Rogue have done here. They basically said, we're gonna pick our jungler on three no matter what, so why not get another power pick with the Orianna? So the Rel, really good engage support. We see it a lot with things like the Nocturne yesterday. So just secures you that engage and secures you that follow-up. Because having a ball on your engager is all good and dandy, but you need some more that more follow-up and that more reliable engages and more targets to put the ball on. So Let's see how Mad Lions respond. I wouldn't be surprised to see them match support and match mid lane here because if anything other than just the Nar blind pick, it's kind of risky. Yeah, I mean, with uh, the Victor answer here for Human, it of course gives you strong wave clear to sort of neutralize this mid lane, especially later on into the match. And of course, tons of team fight damage. Armut will return to the Nar that was so successful for him up against G2. Makes a lot of sense. You can see the draft plan already. Ban away the Nocturne, ban away the Lilia to prevent the, the Lucian Lilia coming out from Rogue. They won't run back the Nidalee because they need the Renekton. So, ban away the Nocturne, blind pick the Nar. They've matched the. Um, the, the mid lane as well. So we'll have to see how Rogue respond. We expect them to pick up their jungler here, but they could also match, match tops. They're like expecting things like the Jace, perhaps the Kennen that we've seen out of Oduamne, but no, gonna go for the Hair Creep. I think that's the smartest decision. Letting jungle go 4-5 yeah. here is kind of risky. Yeah, exactly. It feels like it's a little bit easier to pinch the jungle pool with just two bands in the second rotation as opposed to top lane, where we know that Oduamne always has those comfort picks to fall back on, the likes of the Kennen and whatnot there. So we already know Rogue, very strong team fight composition. Mad Lions also trying to fight back against it. And now for Rogue, it's about securing strong pushing bot lane, so I'd actually look at bands like potentially an Ash here for the Mad Lions. Yeah, definitely. We've seen exactly how important bot lane priority has been for Rogue when they get those advantages in the bot lane. So easy for them to dictate the base of the game, something that you guys brought up earlier. So easy for them to force the Herald swaps or not. Really, they get to be the ones to decide all of the early game action. Now, credit to El Yoya, he was the one to break that, to interrupt that cycle previously, but it doesn't make it any easier if the bot lane here is guaranteed to find early pressure. And that's something Rogue always likes to do. Things like Kalista Rel, pushing lanes, Ash, like Ender said, Ash already taken away, so I wouldn't be surprised to see the Kalista taken away to prevent Rogue having that strong bot lane, that strong priority like that we saw them use against teams like Schalke to make sure that they had the first move into mid, so they always had numbers advantages, and Mad Lions picking up this now, do they want to ban away top laners, and do Rogue want to ban away more supports or bot laners to get that strong push in bot side? And we have to remember, something that maybe has slipped past our, ga our, our gaze here is the Senna. This has been a champion that's been massively high priority, probably the reason that we are now seeing a Tom Kench banned away. Remember that it was Mad Lions who took the Jinx Thresh lane to shut down the Senna Cho Gath that Rogue brought to the table. The question is, do Mad Lions want to ban this away? Could they give away a center rail lane? Is that even something that you want to prioritize? Because that has been an insanely high priority, insanely successful pick across the playoffs, but it's not showing up yet. Yeah, I would say that with Rel locked in, I would be very surprised to see Rogue go the direction of the Senna. Of course, the Tom Kench ban by Rogue almost hints at that themselves. Now, Rogue do have some options if they were looking for a pick in a similar vein to the Ash. The Varus can, of course, give you some strong presence on the bot side of the map. Yeah, let's see, they're hovering dream here, but I think it's going to be a Kalista pickup. The Kalista Rel is so powerful. True. Yeah, going for the Kalista. And then you have to question what ADs are open. You have got the Aphelios open. The uh, the Jin is also open. The Zaya is open. Got a lot of ADs open here, so we'll have to see how Rogue want to trade it off to get the powerful pick on the AD. You could also just pick top lane here and just counter top lane, but then counter AD. But it looks like they're going to pick up the Vara, so they think that's the strongest champ that for their comp right now with all this engage, all this AoE damage, rather than going for something like the winning lane uh, in Kalista. Yeah, I mean, right now, Rogue have all the tools they could ever want to say, we are fighting right now. So it's very much a game where Rogue, if they're up to date with vision, if they're tracking Mad Lines well through the game, they can find numbers advantage fights and of course try to catch out some of the players of the Mad Lions, maybe a little bit more conditional with things like the Nar. They need more setup when it comes to when they're actually going to be looking for a fight. Yeah, the Alistar picked up surprised me a little bit. Something I completely forgot about actually, the, the answer into Rel. I'm surprised Rogue didn't want to take that away. Instead, they took away the Senna time, like Drake's pointed out, and the Ezreal. And uh, we'll have to see what AD they pick up here, because the only ones really open, like we saw earlier on, are things like the Jin, perhaps. And of course, it's credit to the flexibility of the Mad bot lane that priority bands like Ezreal and Tom Kench are what get taken away. The Jin now being locked in, we saw in the hands of Reckless yesterday, felt a bit underwhelming in the overall pool of AD carries. Maybe Karzi can have a better performance today, but the Varus, we know, can be that oppressive lane bully, can set Rogue up to have some pushing bot lane on their side. The debate here, though, for Rogue, trying to set up Oduwamne for success, trying to give him that counter pick for top lane. Karma, not the spiciest answer, but has proven to be a consistent one. Instead, Ooh. however, we get the GP. I really like this. So coming in, it was maybe a little bit unexpected. The Karma, he's been playing a bunch of the Renekton as an answer into the Star matchup, of course, can work. But
but now Rogue, with this GP coming in, have a lot uh, of great options. I think in the early laning phase, GP not going to be too unhappy here versus the Narf. He takes some nice trades, but also that ultimate versus a Victor versus a Jin, very challenging to deal with when behind you, you're getting slowed by the cannon barrage, and in front of you, a horse is sprinting straight at you. Yeah, definitely. We saw this matchup yesterday, I believe, in the TSM versus TL uh, series, Huni versus Safari, GP into Nar, and although they were losing that game, Team Liquid and the GP was not falling behind when it came to the team fights. The GP was so oppressive, especially now that Mad Lions have picked up two immobile carries. Yes, I have the phase rush, and Jin will have a lot of mobility, but the GP ult on top of the Orana ult and the Hecarim ult, the Rel, the Varus, there's so many spells flying at Mad Lions here that they need to make sure they can find the right engage to dodge them away and get their carries into the fight. And gentlemen, we do need to remake picks and bans, so we will have a few minutes. We're just a bit delayed heading into game one as you see the coaches uh, give each other a nice COVID safe bow as they leave the stage. We are moments away, of course, from the first game in the series, and it's a thriller, but when I look at the picks and bans, what I see for Rogue is they've secured some early priority mm -hmm. in some of their lanes. They've secured a ton of team fight power and on the opposite side for Mad Lions. Now, I like Victor in the meta. I like Gnar in the meta, but that is not nearly as reliable as GP ult into Hecarim ult into Orianna ult. It feels like Rogue have a clear path to team fight victory. Yeah, they have a lot of reliability, like you said, Drake. Also, the interesting thing for me here, like you touched on the mid lane matchup, Orianna into Victor is something that's being picked a lot in Europe especially, but most of the time I see this matchup, Orianna, if she gets ahead by a slip Liver. She's always dominating the lane phase. So talking about priority, talking about the push, I think Rogue have definitely secured that in the mid bot side. Yeah, and I think that it's going to be a challenge, of course, in any game that you go and face up Rogue. Looking at early lane pressure, looking at early jungle pressure, I do feel like Oyoya got what he wanted, right? With a first pick, Ujur, super strong champion in the meta. If we're looking to set up any player on Mad Lines for success right off the bat, Oyoya must feel at home. Absolutely has to. And I think, of course, there is also a certain amount of pressure because we have seen that if El Yoyo wants to gank, it does mean Inspired will be getting ahead. And a Hecarim getting ahead is always going to be a bit of a concern for the opposite side. That does make it feel a little bit like Mad Lions are on a clock up against a composition like this, despite also picking some solid scaling options themselves. Yeah, they have some scaling, but you're definitely right by saying they're on somewhat of a clock. I mean, if you look at the series yesterday, Rogue versus G2, the first game, Inspired was on the Udyr. He got himself ahead. He, I think it was 2-3-0. A lot ahead of Yankos in the clear especially, but the champ itself is very oppressive in the early game, but when it comes to the mid to late game, it's almost like a walking health bar with a little point and click stun for somewhat of an engage, so it's definitely more oppressive in the early game, whereas Hecarim, although he does have a pretty strong early game, in team fights he's always going to be that for beefy sure. frontline who's engaging on your backline, has multiple AoE CCs and can find your carries regardless of his positioning. Yeah, I think you'd also look typically at a champion like a Victor perhaps, you know, with the gravity field, with the burst damage the AoE can have, it's good when you're, you're playing back and you're inviting people to run into you. The problem is, there's a lot of champions that are trying to run at you. There's so many tools that Rogue have that Humanoid is going to have to be on peak game. Yeah, definitely. Looking at these two comms, gentlemen, I would say Rogue's AoE team fighting is definitely favored. We touched on it a lot. Karzi and Humanoid need to be careful. They need to be careful where they position, but they definitely have a lot of re-engage with the Alistar, with the Victor ult. If uh, Larson or Hans gets caught by that at all, then they're definitely going to shut down. So I'm looking at the carries in these fights, and I'm looking at who wins this topside matchup. You know, GP into Nar, who can get the push to move into mid first to impact this control mage lane? And I think the big thing is if GP gets ahead, we've known he could be this massive team fight threat. But even if he starts to fall behind, the GP ult is so crucial for shutting down the immobile carries on the side of Mad Lions. Good news is Jin can buy a Gale for us now. Yay, this season, but still not really enough to nullify the strengths of that ultimate. And for Armut, he has been very good on Nard. It has been one of his most successful picks, if not his most successful pick. He has been able to find the angles in the team fight, but that is not 100% reliable. It is the most telegraphed hard engage in the entire game. A lot of pressure on him in these team fights to come in clutch because three seconds of hard CC at level 16 can be the difference maker against a team composition as strong as Rogue's. Yeah, big question for me here is will Inspired play around the top side at all in the early game? Because yesterday he actually did spend quite some time around Oduwamne, but we know usually the history of Rogue tells us Oduwamne weak side King El Yoya, very active in the early game, so playing around Anar, if this lane does get volatile, does have some room for ganks. Absolutely does, and of course we are just moments away now from the first game in the final series, LEC Spring 2021. Mad Lions versus Rogue, rising stars of the LEC, but who will take the trophy today? That's the question on my mind, as I set up. It's a good question. Cost. It's a hard, it's a hard question. But let's find it out as we get ready for game one. And as joyous and as exciting as the music is that brings us into game, it's important to remember the pressure that is on all 10 players on this stage. There will be a new champion 
In the LEC, it is a new era for European League of Legends. There is no G2, there is no Fnatic. You will not see those logos today. Today, there is only Rogue and Mad Lions. But in the end, there can only be one. High pressure on both sides, big opportunity for both of these lineups. And while there is one large trophy on the line, there is another a thing to fight for here today between two of these two players. And I think it's the title for who is the best jungler in Europe. For so long in EU, in the LEC, it has been Yankos, and players have gotten close, self-made last year, inspired through much of the split. But after both these junglers outdid Yankos in the playoffs, and with their strength so far, I do believe that this series will be able to answer that question. Yeah, definitely. Inspired was one of those players coming into spring split that loads of people said, Rogue dominating screen. Inspired looks like the best jungler, but Alyoya coming out of nowhere. His growth has been so impressive with the early games that he, he got from Mad Lions throughout the whole spring split. Showing up in playoffs, it's definitely going to be a tough one to decide who is the better jungler in the series. Yeah, and, and these two junglers have a bit of a different style because when I look at Inspired, he is the efficiency king, the guy that will be up three camps on you without even realizing how it happened. And oftentimes, Alyoya, the other hand, is the guy that surprises you a bit. When these two junglers faced off against each other the last time, it was, you know, the full clear jungle meta we're so used to seeing where Inspired would walk into the enemy jungle, place down a ward. a trade here, though. Level one, Karzi taking a big chunk out there, and as interesting as the junglers are, it looks like Rogue are uh, more interested on winning out in some of these individual yeah, matchups. Yeah, but I mean, that's the thing, right? You always expect Rogue to have super powerful lanes early on, and something that Elioya will have to consider, because with Inspired pathing from the top side down, very often you would go in, ward the enemy jungle, but Elioya's brilliance in their last face-off was dodging around the vision, knowing the predictable wards, and being able to find really creative ganks. Yeah, we'll see if we can find those ganks. Both junglers pathing towards the bot side here, and Varus is a pick that we haven't seen much in Europe. I think Hans is the only one who's pulled it out. Out. We've seen a lot in the LPL along things like Ezreal definitely showing up in this early lane phase against the Mad Lions bot lane who I think Karzi and Kaiser throughout the whole of spring split were almost like an inconsistency factor for Mad Lions, you know. Despite having a topside lead, they would always throw it with going so aggressive into bot side or finding these 2v2 kills that even happened to them a lot. So the inconsistency was very, very stark contrast to what you see in playoffs now. I think playoffs, Karzi has definitely stepped up. The lane phase is more consistent. The damage output is through the roof. And on those hyper carries, he seems to have a lot more comfort. And it is incredible. Mad's turnaround, you think about the absolute collapse of this team at Worlds to an inconsistent regular season to then be able to show up in playoffs like it's nothing. Remember, they were throwing leads in the regular season, massive early game advantages on single Baron plays left and right, and now it feels like, well, yes, they have fallen behind in the early game against Rogue. They have been able to show up so consistently mid to late game to win out on these team fights. That said, as much as the stories are important here, we got to keep our eyes on the junglers. We set that expectation, exactly. and now Inspired and Elyoya on the same side of the map. Neither side going to be able to have a big advantage. Important to note, Hansama, no mana, but a very big health advantage. Yeah, right now, Rogue have bot priority, but Humanoid has mid priority for Mad Lions. Now, Yoya on the early game, Udyr feels really strong in any sort of these fights, so it may be an all out brawl for the Scuttle Crab because Elyoya will not want to give this up, and both mid laners are resetting so they can TP back and fight. Yeah. Trimby and Hansom are getting pushed away by Kai's guys of the engage. Oh, they've got the setup. That's the ignite now ticking. He's trying to move out the crash down. The extra shield going to keep him healthy for now. Hansom not too afraid, throwing down auto attacks in response. But Mad Lions backing away does mean El Yoyo will be able to grab the crab on the back of that solid trade. Yeah, it looks like he'll pick it up. Both mid laners did TP back, but there was a lot of fighting in the bot side. There were so many cool mechanical plays there. Trimby canceling the first combo from Kaiser, but in the end they contested the bot wave. They pushed out to contest the crab, and now El Yoyo can get a huge lead from this. I mean, double crab in the early stages of the jungle is so important when it comes to getting the first back first items and setting up vision on the map. Yeah, it's absolutely crucial. And again, Odwamne on the other side has priority top side for Rogue, but Inspired, it's a blue buff versus a red buff. It's level four Hecarim versus level four Udyr is not going to want to take that trade. So already great start for Elioya. Yeah, definitely a great start, especially against a player like Inspired, who we saw yesterday is so, so clean at getting these efficient pathings Ooh, to get the himself ahead. Respawn. He is around mid. The Raptor respawn is coming up as well. So if he can deny this, that's a three camp advantage for Elioya in the first four minutes of the game. TP used by Odwamne wants to stay involved in that laning phase, but with the gravity field already down, maybe Larson is at a false sense of security. Oh yeah, could try to roam through, but look at how he's pathing down to the bottom side of the lane. Has the vision there to cover him, knows that he can feel relatively comfortable. However, Inspire going to find out the Raptors are now gone, letting him know that for now at least, El Yoya is on the top side of the map. Yeah, and Humanoid winning out on this mid match. He might try to cancel Larson here. He does in the end. Larson doesn't have TP, no potions to work with either, and the wave is frozen. And that's going to be really difficult for Larson. When he comes back to lane, he should be down a lot of CS. So the early Humanoid game... Humanoid knows he's in that bush too. He can keep stopping this. Yeah, stops him again. The early game for the mid jungle of Mad Lions is definitely in their favor. This gold lead you see on the screen at the top there, 300 is just purely from the mid jungle. 
And of course, important to note that the last time we saw these two teams play, even though Mad Lions did win, it was early game every single time for Rogue. So important and dramatic shift here in this game, even with a draft that we're maybe a little bit more worried about when it comes to team fights, that they have been able to at least stop for now the early game pressure of Rogue. Yeah, and I mean, this is to some extent Mad Lions and El Yoya coming in with an early game plan because in that series, it was so often the full clear handshake between these two junglers. And El Yoya said, no, 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 calling the shots in the early game like we've heard Mad Lions say he does a million times before. He wants to fight over the Scuttle Crabs with that first pick, Udyr, and off the reset, Madline's pathing towards mid. Yeah, I think they want to crash this mid wave. Trimby's around, Karzi also roamed up because there's no need for him to be bought. Looks like the wave will bounce in the end, so Larson should be safe in this mid matchup. The jungle supports just showing themselves just in case anyone might try to look for some kind of gank. But Humanoid, you can already see the CS. He's going to use the Victor Ultimate on this wave to push it in, get a free base, and that just gets him a natural creep advantage from just early lane phase trades, getting him ahead. And that's really, really good, especially in this Oriana Victor matchup. Going into the mid to late game, getting those items first is going to be so crucial. Yeah, and right now, already seeing the, the big lead start to develop in both jungle and mid lane for the Mad Lines. But there is a concern they have to think about with level sixes coming through on the map. We already know Rogue have so many good tools to force fights and also with both top laners using their TP now Odo has the ability to influence mid and bot without a response. Yeah with the ultimate from Gangplank but just bring it back to the mid jungle look at the lead that they have Elia has almost like a four camp advantage onto Inspired we can see it in the gold already 300 gold lead there and then you look in mid Humanoid will come back to mid to pick up this wave and he's gonna have around 10-15 CS lead as well so really well played from the early game from the mid jungle of Mad Lions definitely stepping up in the series because you'd argue that the Udyr does have favorable uh, matchup into the Hecarim in the early game and it looks like Mad Lions have the pushing lanes to actually contest Rogue. Look, El Yoya's doing the Inspired. He's just back here every single time for the Raptor respawn. He knows those timers like the back of his hand and, well, doesn't bother with the red buff, but you take all those small wins. And credit to El Yoya, of course, as a player. He said so many times, he said in interviews on Euphoria, you know, no matter who he's playing against, no matter what the circumstances, he always tries to learn from his opponent. In this case, very obvious is a move that Inspired has done before. Not sure where he learned it, but mimicking some of the plays that we have seen from Inspired. And also important to note, you guys brought it up, is Ooh. another combo cancel, well played by Trimby. We'll hold that thought as Hansama just hit level six. Kaiser now gonna be in trouble. He has been rooted up. That's the crash down the gangplank. All to follow. Kaiser running for the hills, but it's not enough. First blood for Hansama. That's gonna be big. Karzi forced to back away. Yeah, it's a big 2v2, but it's a 3v2. Oduame with the cannon barrage. Rogue were waiting for this moment, and they strike first in the LEC finals. Yeah, that's definitely gonna hurt this bot matchup. Hansama getting first, but I think Inspired's on the dragon as well. So no, it looks like he's on the bot crab. So the advantage is for Rogue coming from the bot side of the map. That's gonna help out Inspired, who can get the crab. A little bit of bot, bot priority there, which he didn't have in the level three, level four. And we'll see this replay again. Hansama. Just trading aggressively onto Kaiser, who gets his combo cancelled again. This is the second one that uh, Trimby's cancelled with the stun on the engage, and then getting a level up from the creep. You'll see Hansama hitting the minion there, leveling up, tossing out the ultimate. Kaiser not flashing it in the end, gets taken down. Yeah, presumably Trimby has spent more time out of lane. That's why he's level four. So the level six completely unexpected there for the Mad Lions, because that was, you know, four players all 100% HP, but with the help of the cannon barrage, enough to get the kill. And at the end of the day, this kind of bot lane priority has been so important for Rogue. You saw it cost a little bit to El Yoya, or to Inspired rather, in the early game when El Yoya had bot priority from Karzi and Kaiser. He's able to take away those crabs. The fact that Hansama is now coming into lane, finding kills at level six, that Trimby is backing up, canceling any of the aggression from Mad Lions, is big for Rogue because while Inspired is inevitably the center of attention after his fantastic performance yesterday, Hansama is key in Rogue building up these early leads. Yeah, definitely. And Hans is the only player in this game with prior finals experience, right? So getting kills onto him, getting resources onto him is so important because he has that experience to bring it home if it needs to be. And yet Rogue do know that early kills do not a game make. They are the the sort of the team that's known for building up lane advantages and not necessarily killing you to get their early lead. So the gold overall is still dead even because again of the mid jungle combination. I have to say that sort of the evolution already that we've seen from the mid matchup has been Larson on the back foot. Now Yoya's mid. Trying to proc phase rush. Has to hold on to a few cooldowns, but he's going to continue to walk forward just to make sure the wave does push in. Hansama and Trimby, though, are already going to be grabbing a few plates. It doesn't look like Kai's. The Raptor Camp. <laughs> Karzi are comfortable to contest, and now Inspired. It's a battle for the chickens. Inspired comes in and swoops at least a little bit away, but still a tough break for the Hecarim. Yeah, Odir is definitely ahead in this matchup. Timing the Raptors, getting himself ahead. He did have a level lead, almost level eight, so he's definitely a level up onto Inspired here. Starting up the Herald, it's on a ward though, so looks like Rogue will know, but can they answer? They have top push, they have mid push. Larson needs to go to base. The only real winning lane here for Ro for Rogue is their bot side, right? Larson down 15 CS, uh, Inspired's fallen behind, but it looks like it will be a Dragon for Herald trade, which is obviously favored to the Herald, given the game state, right? They didn't lose anything for this Herald, and they can use it for extra gold to contest the second Drake. So naturally ahead for Mad Lions there, but a good pickup on the cross map for Rogue. Now there is going to be another window here for Rogue. Odwamne's Cannon Barrage is going to be up. And
and that's just before the teleport returns from Armut. Even Odwamne, his TP, going to be up relatively soon. So if Rogue do want to set up a player on bot side, I think that would be smart. You can already see, like, on the minimap right now, Humanoid is pathing up towards the top lane. Yeah, maybe you want to look some kind of cross map, because maybe Inspired wants to Herald bot tower. Three plates left. One Herald crash with some kind of mid push should take that tower down. And once that tower is down, your bot lane's unlocked. They can move around the map, and that's key if Rogue want to get this early game snowballing. 320 guaranteed gold. He's got a few more minutes to use it. Of course, 14 minutes. The timer on the tower plates will fall away. Wants to get it down soon. The question will be, where do they want to focus those resources? For Karzi, not on the hyper carry that we've seen from him across the playoffs so far. We got used to the jinx. We got used to the big damage output. Jin certainly can put those big numbers up there, but not necessarily the carry you would expect to do so. So on a more utility-focused pick, do they shift attention away from the bot side to try to put someone like Humanoid ahead, who has been up until maybe this point building a natural lead for himself. Both sides blocking phase rush, though, and will back away. Look at the map right now. Trimby's actually path towards topside, will be seen on a ward, so unlikely we see him commit towards the play. But you also have Kaiser and El Yoya on this side of the map. Yeah, Kaiser moving up. Didn't need to be on the bot wave. And Trimby's around two. There's a lot of wards here for Mad Lion, so they're going to spot out Trimby, but Trimby doesn't spot out Kaiser. He smells something, though, so the pink is going to clear away the wards while Yoya is farming his camps. They want to find somewhere to use this Herald push. Maybe they can look for mid, maybe they can look for top, because bot lane's such a struggle for them right now. Maybe if they can crack Larson's flash, then it means that they can look for dives later on. Yeah, it's a Raptor play once again with Kaiser in the mid lane. No shockwave, but he's not going to overpush his hand. He knows that Trimby is in the area, and Yoya. The Raptors again. It's he crazy, man. He honestly owns this Raptor camp. Like, this this man has rented the property. Inspired's trying to get him out of the lease. He says the contract terms are not good, but El Yoya is not having it, dude. But but do look at the bot lane right now, because a big wave was just crashed in, and with the time that Kaiser spent towards the top side, well, now Hansama way too far forward. Caught out, good combo, a lot of burst damage coming in. Hansama needs to make it out safety. The flash, the heal, the blast going to follow up. Karzi flashing over with the four shot. Can't get done, oh. they're trying to turn it back. Should be some good damage, but Inspired, inspired. ready to go over the wall. Karzi gonna get taken down. That's a good response. They're now trying to back him up. Larson trying to ferry him out to safety. He will make it out for now. Larson, is he going to be the one in trouble. Phase rush proc. Trap on the ground. Doesn't look like it's going to be enough. A good turn back from Rogue. A bit shocking there. It turns into a one versus one. Hansama acting as the initiation. Did not expect Kaiser to be there so soon, but good for them that Inspired was ready to fire back and trade it into a one for one. Yeah, I think Hans was kind of fake pressuring Karzi off the tower there. Tried to look for the 1v1. Maybe he was threatening some kind of gang plank, but Larson is vulnerable here. He has no mana. Has the shockwave though. Level up to give him a lot of mana, but here's the Herald. Kaiser's around. They want to look for some kind of dive perhaps. Shockwave to clear the wave. The Herald didn't even spawn yet, so it is going to oh, give Tower Aggro over. Larson can feel pretty comfortable here. That Shockwave's actually massive. It really stops his Herald from getting a little bit more. And now, Trimby and Inspired in the area. Mad have no room to follow up. Yeah, it's possible Rogue could force El Yoya off the Scuttle Crab. It depends when it's spawning. I think it's coming up right now. El Yoya does not have a smite, though. And uh, it will just be another small win for him, able to sneak that away before Inspired gets into his jungle. So jungle lead maintained by El Yoya, but if we were actually to, to pull up the gold, even with that early kill, you can see about 350 still there for El Yoya, but not the same lead it once was. Yeah, and the mid lane's cash up as well. Larson's there, but Rogue are in the bot side jungle here. They don't have the GPU to work with. Both top laners have TP, so this could be a 5v5 at a snap of a finger. And testing this red buff. Larson doesn't have Shockwave. Inspired doesn't have ult. This might be risky. It's going to be big. Kaiser with ultimate does mean that they could try to force a fight, but they will not take the risk. Just a cheeky steal attempt there on the deadly flourish. Jin will back away. Yeah, and Rogue keep having this bot push, and you can see they're moving with Larson because Larson TP'd back. They knew Humanoid had the base, and they moved in to the bot side jungle. And they're just kind of dominating this. Maybe they want to look for some kind of dive. Karzi yeah, has no sums. Kaiser has no sums. There's double TP on both top laners here. They might look for it. Fired ultimate almost available. Kaiser taking his time here debating. When he needs to find the knockback, Larson in the area. Shockwave not quite available yet. They're getting the TP for now as Armut's committing a few sums. Happy to make his way down. Ow. Yeah, and uh, Inspired's ultimate wasn't up for that play. It was about three seconds before it came up. Just came up now. Larson didn't have the Shockwave either, so that's why Rogue didn't commit to the play. Getting the TP from Armut's huge, though. They just need to make sure that they're safe here unless they want to look for a play because mid tower's falling. Engage is going to be there immediately. The all comes back from Kaiser. They're trying to stop it, but he is an unstoppable pony. Inspired, though, is just going to dash out to safety. Kaiser now going to walk away as well. That's the TP coming in from the GP, but the plates have fallen away, and already Humanoid is breaking down the mid lane. Rogue are going to match in this play, but they might find themselves in trouble. I mean, it's so huge that Mad Lions are able to disengage that without losing a single player. Yes, the turret goes down, but the entire time that Rogue were setting up that play on bot side, Humanoid was chilling in mid lane, knocking down that tower. Larson lost more minions, and at the same time, El Yoya full cleared the top side away from Rogue. So this is Rogue 
feeling forced, feeling pressured to make plays, but Mad Lions continuing to gain advantages elsewhere on the map. Yeah, you can see how the story of the game's going around. Rogue playing heavy for bot side despite being behind in mid-jungle, and now even further behind in mid-jungle. The item's being picked up now. Yoya still a level ahead of Inspired, and Humanoid still having that CS advantage over Larson in this mid-jungle matchup. But look at Hans, almost 40 CS up, has that Kraken Slayer already, so we'll have to see how they move around with their bot lane, because Drake's spawning soon. They already have the first dragon, bot power's down. Looks like Hans is going to be around, around mid, and they want to fight for some kind of neutral objective here. And 15 minutes in, Massive gold leads across all the lanes, but at the end of the day, it results in a dead even gold score. 24.5 to about 24.4. There's a Mountain Drake or an Infernal Drake there, too, as Elioya now trying to find the dive running in. Good combo CC. Good flash out from Odawamne, though, trying to hold on. That's the grass proc, but not nearly enough. Mad find a kill. Hansama now looking at the response. They know Kaiser does not have ultimate. It makes Arbut. it an easy pickup, but that is going to be the Meganar. Trimby now trying to turn it into strong bars, but maybe not strong enough. Elioya just doing so much damage in this exchange. Looking for one more. Are you kidding me? That Udyr is power. Powerful. Mad Lion's feeling good with the dive on the top side. Elioy and Armut tanked the tower for a century. It felt like it did not matter, though they were strong enough, and Rogue did not have the damage to kill him. Yeah, and Inspired this whole time was towards the bot side of the map, so he couldn't join the fight. Huge play from uh, Mad Lions, who were the ones to initiate this. Rogue were the ones who had to be reactive. You can see Hands and Trimmy trying to get to the play in time, but Mad Lions didn't even have a wave here. They just had enough damage to take down Odoamne. Armut tanking the tower smart, and then by the time Rogue's bot lanes arrived, the mid jungle of Rogue aren't even there, so the, it's just a 2v3. They do end up picking up Kaiser with Armut on the Nar, jumps in alongside Elioya, and they pick up another kill. And there's a Rift Herald on the back end of that too, so Mad Lions can continue to try and press their advantage and extend their threat in this game. The thing to keep in mind on Rogue side, they were able to get the first two Drakes of the game. They have a very strong AoE team fight combination to work with, so this will force Mad Lions into fights against them. But if Mad Lions can continue to extend this gold lead, sometimes the composition advantages from Rogue may not matter. And again, stark contrast to the first series. First series, it was Mad falling behind, Mad coming back in team fights. This time around, it is Rogue falling behind. Rogue, the team that will need to bring it back in team fights. Mad Lions, instead, we get to see a test that we haven't seen for them in a while, which is snowballing this gold lead, building this early massive advantage to be bigger and bigger to the point where Rogue's team fight strengths are no longer relevant. But that said, we're in an interesting position. The gold lead very close, 1k difference. Potentially, you could argue, balanced out by the Drakes as it now shrinks down to 600. So if you're at home, we got to know. Sometimes it's easy. Sometimes there's a G2 or a Fnatic and fan favorites win out. But today, we get to find the new fan favorites. So who do you think will win LEC Spring 2021? Mad or Rogue? You can vote in chat now. That is MAD or RGE. Let us know who you think is taking this one. Is Elioya ready for a bit of a top play? Yeah, hovering towards the top side here. Mad Lion's objective is the top tower. Humanoids towards the bot side with TP. Armut's in mid without TP, so he can move because of the shorter lane. So really good setup for Mad Lion's. Rogue have to respond, so they're on the back foot. You can see Otto Amne hovering around in the jungle. Rogue might look for a fight here if Elioya goes too deep. It's debating. That's going to be the stun, that's going to be the fall, but the Udyr is just so tanky. Armut now coming over the wall. Looks like he's tired for now. Might want to strike the Rage, but that's going to be the GPL. Big barrels on the side, could matter, but they're going to run away pretty quickly, not let anything else go down, and they get the tower and the process. Mad Lions get the objective on a numbers disadvantage. Humanoid's pushing in bot, and Rogue have sent five members towards this top side here. Humanoid is ready to TP if a fight kicked off, but he knew that Mad Lions could back away. The GP ultimate's wasted, and now no one's farming bot's way, but Oduamne's falling behind. He's going to have to run all the way down to bot, or Larson can move bot, and then Oduamne can catch mid. The setup for Mad Lions was so good and set up to make Rogue lose out on the map. And it's just the same situation over and over again. Again, for, for Rogue, it feels like where they're throwing numbers at a play, not really connecting. It's surprising considering all the engaged tools they have, but, well, the chains of corruption go wide for Hansama. Odo's ult isn't quite enough to get inspired into range to, to pull the trigger on that one, too. So Rogue end up disengaging the play and losing out so much. Yeah, really good setup from uh, Mad Lions there. Rogue on the back foot, you'd say, uh, in this early game, and uh, they need to find some kind of team fight to crack the game open, and those team fights are going to be around the Dragons. Now, Mad Lions have invested a lot of their resources into early gold, right? Getting the early towers, getting the early heralds, making sure they're ahead in gold, so when they come to contesting this third and fourth Dragon, they'll be naturally ahead in, in items. Yeah, and it is worth pointing out that the Rogue's bot lane did do well early on, right? So there's a bit of a, a gold imbalance. Mid-jungle, of course, for Mad Lions doing very well, so when it comes to the team fights, it's mainly about, like, human the damage he can output, whereas Han Sama does have quite a sizable lead over his opponent in Karzi, and Rogue needs to do everything in their power to make sure he's in a position where he can freely auto-attack and deal the damage he needs to. Yeah, and definitely a position of pressure, but again, Han Sama, the man with experience, but Mad, the team who have the fans behind them. Of course, it's not the roaring boom of a crowd, but it is still something that matters a lot, having the faithful behind you, 63% to 37. I think Pretty fair when we've seen the biggest strength for Rogue, which has been their early game, dismantled a bit in this game one by Mad Lions, a team who were very confidently winning so many of the team fights. 
Maybe that phase starts to fade away a little bit as the Herald is summoned in the Raptor Pit. I think out of necessity, just because there was really nowhere else to put it at that point. Yeah, it'll get there and do something eventually, okay? Just has to do the whole long walk down mid lane. Maybe even Rogue could hit it, but I think that Mad Lions have enough players here to make sure they can keep walking it forward. And I do want to remind us, it's such a critical difference too. While we talked so much about El Yoya, Humanoid just outright winning this matchup after being pushed in. You know, the entire time these two teams face each other, last all three lanes now for Mad Lions, continuing to pressure forward and support them in this aggressive style. Yeah, and Humanoid has TP to join this fight. Dragon spawning in 18 seconds. Armwood's already hitting onto this bot tower, and Larson's kind of grouping up, maybe scared of some kind of dive, or he wants to get that blue buff before the fight starts. And Rogue, if they lose this mid push, it's going to be really hard for them to contest this Dragon. Humanoid basing, picking up the Void Staff, TPing in. Two items, Victor. Could be the big fight in the mid lane. TP's going down, both fights. Both teams know if they're ready. They want to find this one. So far, it's been skirmishes left and right. It's been map play. And now it's going to come down to the pure 5v5 and who can find the advantage. Good bit of early poke coming down for Ansama, but keep your eyes on the ball from Orianna and the ulti coming in from Armut off to the side. The rage bar is stacking. Rogar in the pinch. That's the ultimate. They're buying a bit more space, but not a significant amount of damage. Curtain Call opens up to take Oduamne to about 60%. He heals right back up. Scuttlecrab goes down. A bit of vision control, but inspired. He's ready. He's looking for the engage. He's looking for the opportunity. He's pushed Karzi out of the fight. Now they want to get things going. Trippy in the midst of everyone, but he gets stunned. He gets locked up. The shark went for you. Humanoid, he's still alive, Trimby just barely getting shut down and Matt Lyons getting crushed in the fight. Kaiser and Karzi running for their lives. It's a quick three kills picked up by the side of Rogue. Hansama lives with one HP and it was Hans and Trimby seeing Humanoid step too far forward. They were the ones able to single out the Mad Lions member where all the money is for Mad Lions. They take him out of the fight, Hansama lives. That's a one fight for Rogue. I'm so surprised Rogue won that fight. They had so little terrain to work with. They were in a choke. It was so difficult for them to get out and push out after the Jin ultimate, but the Shockwave finds three. Hansama's free hitting on the backside just about lives, like you say. So, wow, such a good setup for Rogue. They're on they're on Dragon Soul Point now. They picked up three kills. This early game advantage for Mad Lions has fallen apart. I mean, it's such a critical moment in the game, too, because Mad Lions win this fight. They already had a gold lead. That can lead to things like Baron, but here you have Trimby setting up for the Chains shockwave. of Corruption into a three-man Shockwave. The Shockwave didn't just kill Victor. It also set up for the shutdown on El Yoya, too. So big kills going over the carries of Rogue. Which is surprising, right? This game's a game of opposites. Rogue losing the early game and winning out on the fights when Mad Lions were the team in this series who were losing out in the early games and winning out on the fights. So really good setup for Rogue, despite having so little room to work with. And again, we thought if Mad Lions composition was going to win in any team fight scenario, it'd be where uh, Rogue are forced to fight into them. And they were, but instead a quick shockwave over the wall. You can see Humanoid does a ton of damage, but if he can't get a second rotation out there, it's simply not enough when his AD carry doesn't get to participate in the fight, when the El Yoya is getting taken out of the fight. And honestly, eyes on that Orianna ball for every team fight to follow. Larson shockwave, massive. Yeah, it was absolutely massive, and that's put him back into the game, right? He's even in gold with Humanoid, even despite being down in the early game, down in the mid game, not being in the right place at the right time, and Humanoid farming up for free. Hansama also has secured a shutdown for himself. All the kills, barring one, are on the carries of Rogue, so I have to see how they use them. They have so much teamfight spells to work with. You can see if Mad Lions group up even for one second, the Shockwave connects, a GP ult, a Hecarim ult, it's lights out. Take a breath. 23 minutes, the goal just about dead even, another fight. Could be coming in at any moment. But for now, gold dead even, yes, but it is three Drakes to Rogue. They get to decide the next fight. We saw this yesterday. You can go to Dragon, you can go to Baron, but the team with three Drakes always wins that trade. Especially when you've got the team fight comp, the premier Wombo, to try and run at Mad Lions, and you have to take stock. Well, Karzi doesn't have Flash all the way up until that Drake does end up spawning. He's a sitting duck here. If Rogue ever see him caught out of position, they see El Yoya now. You know, the engage to Wombo now coming in. They've got good damage. Now, oh, you're not nearly as strong as he was earlier. Oh. But now, Karzi looking for the interrupt. Arma now stepping forward. That's the shockwave. But Larson, it might be too little too late. Eyes on the Noor. The Noor gets three into the wall, but it's not enough. Arma getting taken down. Rogue found two more kills. They can do anything they want on this map. How are Rogue making this work? Humanoid wasn't even there. Mad Lions opted into that fight, and Rogue, five player strong, want it. Now, Odo has to flash away, but El is fast. Stepping forward, a lot of cooldowns missing, but Humanoid, not the best in this chase situation, really wants Rogue to fight into him. Good picks coming in from the Rogue lineup. Yeah, both teams are on. <laughs> Knife's Edge, in a sense, they want to find a fight. You can see Inspired engaging onto Oyoya with Flash Up and Kaiser wanting to re-engage despite having a numbers disadvantage. You have to question what these teams are even fighting for. There's no Dragon, there's no Baron setup for either team, so no one can really find any neutral objectives off this fight. But they both just want to pull the trigger and find and engage. You can see Rogue grouping up, Mad Lions grouping up, but look at Humanoids, he's too far away. I don't even know if Rogue know this, but they just tried to engage onto Oyoya and Kaiser's re-engage. Although he does knock Larson into Armwood, they don't have the burst to take him down. The Shockwave finding two, the Magnet Storm and Hansen free hitting on the back line. Look, Mad Lions have to be super smart about their fights. Odo, they need the numbers, and they're looking for Odo. Good cast. 
He'll take his time. He's just going to go into the fight. He knows Larson TP coming. in. Big TP, though, but Humanoid can't just turn. He can throw down the gravity field. Instead, he's going to try to walk away. Odawamne just looking for the one. He's he just killing Oya. That's Shield Bow. Now he's trying to get a little bit more of the rage coming in. They will manage to finish the job, but Larson in the area. Trimby in the area. Hans can collapse as well. It is a minute 30 to Dragon. It is 35 seconds on El Yo. Rogue will have control of the pit. The weak side king in a 1v4 just straight up gets the solo kill. The rest of Rogue have the threat to keep marching on board. That mid lane tower now looking very vulnerable. Yeah, it looks like Rogue should be able to pick this up. They have a lot of members here, and Hans can hit it if he wants to. He has the flash, but it might not be worth it. Having to flash away one minute before your soul is definitely not something you want to do, and El Yoya had to burn flash in his exchange. What did Odoan may have to burn? Nothing. He had no flash, and the GP ult wasn't up, so definitely favored when it comes to this fourth dragon in 50 seconds. Rogue already have the setup, and Mad Lions don't have much to work with in terms of face check unless Alistar or Kaiser can run in, and then they might have to pop the ult early if Hans finds a, uh, a chain of corruption or a shockwave hits the back line. It's going to be really hard for Mad Lions to find some kind of vision to contest this uh, this fourth dragon. Yeah, and as that tower does fall, Rogue going to take a backseat. Trimby goes back to base, make sure he can get some wards in the inventory double controls, because again, it's about controlling space now for the Mad Lions. If they see an angle, see an entrance into a team fight, see an area where they can sort of group up multiple members of Mad Lions, they are going to pop against Larson and Hansama. Yeah, Mad Lions have found some kind of control here. Rogue having to back off, but it looks like the 5v5 grouping up. 17 seconds on the dragon. Trimby. Kaiser going forward. It's going to get locked up in the gravity field. He's going to get it out with the ultimate for now, but he's just getting burned down. They simply do too much damage at this point of the game. Kaiser getting dropped off does mean Rogue now have the team fight advantage. Half of Trimby's health for Kaiser's life is not a good exchange. Rogue, they just have to wait out this Meganar for Armut, and then the team fight's looking real good. Armut ben, going in! Strikebreaker 40, he's managed to lock up Hansama. They got the follow, yo, yo, going in too, but the shot clip says no! Not today! Larson has Hansama's back, and Rogue will take the fight! Rogue, absolute masterclass in these fights. Rogue are going to get the Dragon, they're going to get the Baron as well. You can see the members of Rogue splitting up here. They know they have both neutral objectives and almost a 4,000 gold lead. So Rogue, with this team fight composition, absolutely popping off. You can see Kaiser tried to find Trimby, but again, he cancels the combo with the stun, and, and Kaiser's the one who falls. Even after falling victim to Mad Lions in the early game a bit from the side of Rogue, they are out team fighting them. They drafted for this, and now Karzi, I mean, no chance here. Rogue are just going to be able to soak up this fourth and fourth final bullet and secure themselves the Baron. Incredible. We went from a dead even game to two back-to-back -back fights in favor of Rogue. The Baron now the Mountain Soul. The only way Rogue loses at this point is if they throw it all away. Yeah, look at Trimby with this stun here. Kaiser thinks he's found Trimby, but Trimby's the one who's found Kaiser. Cancels the combo last second, so he doesn't get knocked up, so Mad Lions can't follow up. There's no target to hit, and then once Kaiser's fallen, that's one of the frontliners down for Mad Lions. Yes, Armut's in the Meganar, but Rogue played slow, and he has to overreach to find the engage. He gets Han Sama, but what's the follow-up? Humanoid's too far away. Cars, he can't pop the ult because he needs to hit Inspired, and then from there, Rogue win the fight. Yeah, I mean, even Lara, Humanoid rather getting caught out there by Inspired and taken down. We have to remember, only one player on this stage has been in an LEC Finals before. That is Han Sama. Both teams in their first game feeling it out, seeing what fights they can go for. And so far, it has been Rogue that are just better. Smart. Looking on the bot side here, Armut has no flash, so he finds he might look for an engage, but you're absolutely right. right. Hansam is the only one who's been in the final. You can see when Armut overextends for that engage in the last fight, he doesn't even blow his flash. He knows he's absolutely fine, and Hansam are playing very clean this game, keeping his flash up just in case he needs to use it and get away from this front line of Mad Lions. And proving and further reminding us that it's not just early game advantage champions like the Ash and Callista, that his damage output in team fights can be incredible on picks like this Varus. Already halfway to three items. We know how much his damage increase is going to, or how much his damage is going to shoot through the roof in that circumstance, but for Mad, the story now is how long can they survive? 28 minutes into the game against Mountain Soul, against Baron Buff, down 6k gold. Can they hold on? I'm looking at Kaiser. He has the flash up. He might want to look for an engage because they're losing inips here. Humanoid's still top lane, though. He's recalling. It's eight seconds away. The snare. For now, it's a slow fight. Arma stacking the rage. They've got a little bit of time here, but they are going to give up bot lane. The rest of Rogue just backing off. They're playing this one patient. This is what we know Rogue can do. When they build a big enough lead, when they have a teamfight advantage here, no surprise to see them play it out nice and slow. So rare to see Rogue make mistakes in an instance like this. Armut uses his ultimate, but it gets nothing done here. He has to hop away. Yeah, Megan R's out. I think they're going to have to back off here. Rogue should be able to pick up the enemy. You can see Larson's already left the bot side. He's going towards mid to push in the wave. As long as Rogue are safe here and they get out, they can start sieging onto the next inhibitor. And the poke and the harass from Mad just won't amount to much against the Mountain Soul. One E from Victor, not enough to really impact these health bars. Karzi going to want to stay back. Very hard for Mad to get sustained damage down against any priority targets without 
really solid ways to get in the back line. Maybe, just maybe they can pray for Arma to find it, but he's already leaping back to safety. As Odawamne just escorting these waves in, has the barrels he can lay down over the wall. He's not one-shotting Karzi yet, but he is doing good damage, and Rogue just going to keep pushing in slowly but surely. They are a juggernaut in the face of Mad's early game. They are determined to win this one. Yeah, Rogue just watching Armwood and Kaiser. Armwood doesn't have the Mega Knot yet, but it's building up. Shockwave connects, though. Good Shockwave. But now they know one of their biggest teamfight tools is down. Rogue will back away for now. Baron buff slowly fading, 12 seconds left. They're gonna be happy with the two inhibitors that they got. They are still set to take total control of this game 30 minutes in. Yeah, total control here. They still have the Mountain Soul Mad Lions, can't find the engage. Kaiser has flash up, Armut gets Meganar, but they can't find an engage because Humanoid was pushing out top. Rogue in the end picking up two inhibitors on that Baron. That's so crucial. The first Baron has secured them two inhibitors. Now they can just go towards the top side of the map, push in the waves with either Orion or GP, make sure the mid and bot waves crash and start sieging this top tower. So Mad Lions are the one who need to find an engage in the next couple of minutes. And, and even then, and you ask, like, what can the Mad Lions actually do? Because we've seen Armut Elioia try to dive into the back lines before, but they simply do not have enough damage to remove a critical carry from Rogue. They, they, all their damage is Humanoid Karzi. These guys very far away. That's what they have to play for. But even then, those players are just weaker than their Rogue counterparts. Yeah, now. exactly. When Kaiser flashed in, what's the follow-up? Bar barring Armut, perhaps? Because the, the Chaos Storm's not going to get to the back line. If he had a Shockwave, maybe Hans would get one popped, and he'd be scared to walk up. But Hans isn't really scared of much. He's got a stopwatch. He's got his flash, and so does Larson. And now Rogue Clap pushing in on the top side. Mad Lions maybe hoping to find a collapse here, but for now they're, they're honestly just holding on, using that Vicar wave clear to good effect. But with two waves of super, one for now, as Armut is at least pushing out the bottom lane, stopping too much pressure from going against him. Elioia just threatening, just trying to find some kind of opportunity. I like G2 the G2 in the finals. G2 <laughs> the G2 flare. Yeah, you're completely right. Armut's pushed out both. That's huge for the side of Mad Lions because that means they can clear mid wave, which is the closest tower to top side, so they can they can bar the siege a little bit. But the GP ult comes out to get the siege going. Locked down, but immediately GP ult is going to be more important. Yes, Inspired will go down, but what is the cost? Because he manages to take it out to safety. In the meantime, Rogue are breaking the tower. It is PVE gameplay. They do not need to fight Mad. Mad, but Mad might have different plans. The leap out from Arma, trying to get the stacks down, wants to hyper proxy. El Yoya in the darkness, waiting in the flank, hoping to find something. But little does he know, Inspired backing just inches away from him with no health whatsoever. Yeah, and El Yoya did not want to tango with Odwamna. He remembers what happened the last time, and it did not end well for him. And even if Mad Lions were able to find that fight, the brilliance is we're still a minute away from any neutral objective spawning. They would have only gotten gold, they would have only held on longer. They could not have converted. Now, a fight, if it were to break out, would be Mad Lions only chance to get back in, otherwise they're facing down a Baron buff and an Elder Dragon with two towers left to defend their Nexus. Yeah, but I think that Matt kind of had a window there, right? Inspired was out of the fight with an ultimate, the GP ult was used for the Siege, and Mad Lions were the ones pushing forwards. Rogue had to back off, maybe they could have found a fight there, but in the end, they decide they opt against it, and Armut's going to push out this top wave as fast as he can in base and look for a TP on this Dragon, because it's whoever gets this Elder Dragon basically has a huge, huge advantage in the team fights. Bit of a fumble though from the side of Rogue. Larson TPs down to the bottom side to get blue buff. I thought it was so that they could test this objective, but then still opts to back anyway. Maybe just needed a little bit more gold for the Void Staff, as he does now have four items, but Orianna still, the big combos are waiting to keep our eye on. So much CC here, and how can Mad Lions really respond? They are shepherded into this corner of their own jungle because they just do not have the vision to play anywhere else. Well, I think we saw almost the only idea from the Mad Lions. Can they split up the fight, see a target that they can try to remove, turn it into a four versus Five. They did that with Inspired last fight. Made him have to ulti on out, and now Rogue are on a warpath. Guys are going to be in trouble. He'll take the Blast Con out of safety, but Armut forced to clear waves means he can't choose when his ulti oh, is up and go. available. Now Kaiser going to be taken down. Only level 12, only two ranks in the ultimate. It's just not enough, but Armut, it's big. Maybe he can turn it Karzi, though, but still Inspired off to the side. Humanoid and Karzi alive for now. Matt are absolutely winning the fight. The two carries left standing for Matt. Will they be enough? Armut still living. Odawamne trying to finish the kill, but he can't do it. Four shot from Karzi is good damage, but Humanoid is going to go down in this exchange. Desperate to kill someone, but no! Flash is out to safety. The flash in response from Hansama. Humanoid drops. Rogue find the fight. There are just too many carry threats from Rogue. Sure, throw everything you can to kill Larson, but Odo and Hansama are still staring you down. Rogue take the fight, and they're gonna take the Elder. Yeah, they're gonna get the Elder. They're gonna get the Baron as well. Probably Humanoid dead for 40 seconds. Yes, he has the TP, but Rogue have four members on the map, and Mad Lions only have two for the next couple 30 seconds, so we'll see what they do. Karzi's around. Maybe he looks for some kind of steal. Trimby's over the wall. Karzi doesn't have some, though. This could be dangerous. Trimby might die. Walking away. Trimby set to fall. Trimby should go down. That's gonna be the Hyper proc. 500 health. And immediately they get the Elder Dragon and just pop him like that. Instantly removed from the map. And now no Humanoid, no Karzi. Well, running into an Elder Dragon. It is not going to work for the Mad Lions. So they must give up this Baron buff. And then is that one final charge for Rogue to seal the deal on game one. 
And when we came into this game, we talked about the battle of the junglers, El Yoya and Inspired, front runners for who will be the best in Europe. But at the end of the day, this has not been a game about the junglers. Early game, yes, it was El Yoya, but mid, late game, it has been about the carry threats from the side of Rogue. Hansama, Larson, backed up by Trimby, playing fantastically in these fights. Yeah, and it looks like Kaiser kind of got caught out here, right? He split from his team, he's trying to hide on vision, but he gets spotted out in the end, and essentially he has to run away, and Mad Lines have to collapse, because if Kaiser falls, down goes the Elder Dragon. So you see all of Mad Lines boarding towards the play, but Kaiser actually plays it pretty well. Knocks away one, and Q flashes onto Larson, who gets rooted, and then gets chain CC to a fall from the fourth shot from Karzi. But like Ender said, there's so many threats on Rogue. If Larson goes down, Hansen or Omne is still alive, and they can input all the damage. Yeah, and we, we see the best supports in Europe all the time try to go for flanks like these when you're so far down in gold, when you're outscaled, and when you're out team fought. Simply because the Gambit didn't work does not mean the idea was not strong, and yet Rogue still have every advantage they need. Yeah, Larson still has flash, but look at the damage. Hans did in that fight almost 7,000 damage. That's more than almost all of Mad Lions combined. And this is the power of Hans Sama on a carry when he is set up to succeed. And this is the power of the Varus, a pick we've been waiting to see in playoffs. Hans Sama bringing it out in the last two days and certainly making the mark on the map. You have to expect to pick and ban to adjust for this potential threat. One inhibitor left for Mad Lions, and there again, an Elder Dragon for the next 50 seconds. Broke Siege onto that. Three inhibitors down, and there's really no room for you to work with if you want to leave your base. But Rogue, they might be looking at the Nexus Tower, they might be looking to end. Cannon Barrage is buying a bit more space. Curtain Call off to the backside, but Rogue again taking their time. They can just wait for this cannon minion to do some work. Barrels posing such a massive threat from Odawamne. A single shockwave could end this game in favor of Rogue. Mad still holding on though, not willing to give it up quite yet. Want to make Rogue work for it here in game one. Last 16 minutes have been completely dominated by Rogue. Just one turret left to go. They have all the tools left, no cannon barrage, and yet Rogue are ready to finish this off. The last turret goes down. The fight. Mad Lions just too strong. Armat in the midst of everyone, but Armat's been locked up. A clean all from Hansama means the Nard isn't even going to push any buttons. Hansama dominating, inspired, going for solo kills, and the Nexus will fall in the final fight. Rogue draw first blood. game came down to a single moment. It truly felt like it was that third Drake, 20 minutes on the clock, and everything it felt like was going Mad Lion's way. They had the advantage from the early game, but it was Trimby setting up Hansama, setting up Larson, the team fighting of Rogue that reigned supreme here for game one. An incredible credit to Trimby. When we looked at the series he's played in the past, we said maybe a little bit of a liability, a guy who gets caught out, a guy who dies a lot, but we saw it up against Limit, and I think we're seeing it now here today. When he is shutting down another support, he is so fantastic. Every single use of that Rel E stopping Kaiser in his tracks. Yeah, basically just outplayed him in the engage, and Kaiser couldn't find him. And I think the thing that fell apart from Mad Lions in this game was the third dragon. They dropped the dragons early game to opt into more gold for their carries. But when it came to the dragon fight, despite Rogue having so little terrain to work with, Trimby was the one to find the engage, Larson was the one to follow up, and Hans was the one to finish them off. Incredible turnaround from Rogue in that first game after a pretty commanding Mad early game. We'll see how it shifts as Rogue have opened the finals with a win. And after the break, Shox, Vettius, and Whippo will break down the key moments from game one. We asked you to show us your moves. And the winner is... Cushion! He's playing Misfortune on the red side, starting off with a fantastic ultimate picking up two quick kills. Dashing backwards into the tri bush, looking for Rakan. Gale Force forwards, finds the kill. Looking for the fourth, the double tap for the double double. Darius at the target, knocked up with the boss cone and the pentakill! We'll see you in summer. Kia, movement that inspires.
or nothing. everyone to the analyst desk rogue are showing up here this weekend as they continued their great form from yesterday into game one yeah actually of course something we have to consider rogue is um very warm let's say they played yesterday they got that practice in uh, not just practice of course don't don't mean to be disrespectful but i mean they got to play a lot of games and now they can continue that into today and it showed in this game let's look at the draft for this first game and talk about draft priorities and maybe questionable priorities i heard whippo on the side of mad lions mm -hmm. you were a bit surprised about some of the particular choices. I was very skeptical with the Udyr first pick. Yesterday, the Hecarim was banned first, and then the Udyr first pick. Today, we see Udyr picked over the Hecarim, even with the likes of Orianna being open. So at first, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Humanoid, Orianna has been a pivotal pick for him pretty much his whole career. So prioritizing Udyr, giving away the Orianna, was a very strange thing at first. But then when I actually saw the early game, I was very impressed. You saw the other take away the double scuttle. You saw him get multiple camps from the Hecarim. And as well, in the Victor Oriana matchup, the Oriana gifted the Rogue on the 1 2. Victor was dominating. I think that what we saw was Mad Lions come in with a pre prepared plan, very much expecting this to come out from Rogue, and they did answer it well. The thing that I think caught them off guard was the Varus and the Gangplank. So, something we talked about a lot at the beginning of the day was how. Mad Lions clearly have a high priority on this NAR. We highlighted how they played it pretty much all the time against G2 and how um, 
they're actually willing to prioritize it for the sake of their bot lane, right? That they will allow their bot lane to flex picks and pick different things just so that they can make sure that they have that weak side top. And then with Rogue answering with things like the Varus and the GP, I think that it makes Mad Lion's comp so much harder to play later into the game. I also think Whipple has a couple of choice words specifically for uh, NAR versus Gangplak and what they can offer to you in the game. So the thing about NAR is what he wants to accomplish requires commitment. He has to jump into a team fight, hit multiple people with the ultimate, and then he can pretty much copy what a cannon barrage brings to a team. Just a cannon barrage alone can zone equal amounts of champions, if not more, in a non-committal fashion, meaning that NAR has to jump in, probably die, especially <laughs> until Varus Ariana. Gangplank can just drop the ultimate on Victor and Jin and accomplish the same thing. We did see that a couple of times later on in the game. I do want to focus and go back to that early game. As you said, these were the choices that were made by Mad Lions. And, and what struck out to me is indeed that Elioya played that very well. And it was a case of information. You uh, very early on identified Inspired is giving up a bit too in too much information also thanks to Odo Amne and Elioya is reacting to that and therefore playing the map better. Right, so when the jungle matchup started, Oduamne leashed the red buff, allowing El Yoyo with a stronger jungler to know exactly what Inspire is going to be planning. A full clear is almost natural at this point of the jungle meta. So we see, well, right now we're going into the replay of the double scuttle, but El Yoya knows Inspire is going to be here. So all he's doing is waiting for Mad's bot lane to get the push back, win the all-in fight here. And all he's doing is dancing with Inspired, making sure that he Inspired can't influence the winning bot lane of Mad. Now, whether it's winning or not is something I'm not 100% <laughs> sure of, but they managed to win anyway. Same thing in the mid matchup. I don't think it's actually winning for the, for, for the victor, but thanks to some great play individually from Mad Lions in the early game, they managed to get a nice advantage in bot, mid, and jungle. And I also have to praise my analyst here because this is exactly what you talked about before, right? Inspired being a fantastic jungler, but El Yoya being willing to take a bit more risks here and there. I think what's impressive is that it showcases El Yoya has many similar characteristics to Inspired, and they both do a great job of being able to read the map. But I also really wanted to highlight how well Humanoid was playing that mid matchup because Victor in those first three levels are very crucial for him. And the way in which he was able to set up the wave and pressure um, Larson in that 1v1 matchup is something that we don't often see from him, but he played it very well and it allowed for what could have been a huge early game snowball in favor of Mad, which is exactly what they needed to do with their comp. One thing to highlight in this matchup is on the first recall, Victor grabs the Doran's ring, which obviously gives him immediate power in the lane, yeah. whereas Oriana is a tier champion. She grabs the tier against the Doran's ring and he leverages all the way to like almost 20 CS lead in the middle yeah. of the matchup. Indeed, uh, and the early game was then better for the Mad Lions, even with the choices they made. But it gets to the team fights. We talked about it so much, and we wanted to take a look at the third Drake fight, which was so incredibly important. And Bupo, you wanted to uh, put our attention on specifically the choke points and the possibilities in position. Absolutely. Now, inspired going in here, the thing is, Armit's on the side looking for a flank rather than looking to zone off this choke point with Humanoid. As you can see right now, Armut's on the side, not together with Humanoid, which means as this team fight is going to start, Trimmy's going to flash in on Humanoid, if you can blow the clip right now. You're going to see him flash in. Armut's nowhere to be found. He's not stopping Larson and Hans from following up on the Trimmy engage. Even gets caught up in the mix, one shot, and that's going to be all she wrote for the Mad Lions. So as a NAR, uh, are you suggesting he goes over the blue wall, for instance, or, or what should he have done? I think he either fully commits for the flank or he stands his ground next to Humanoid, ensuring that if Trimby flashes in on Humanoid, he can jump over Trimby and ensure that there's no follow-up onto the victor. The most important thing to remember with any Drake fight is choke points. That's why so many teams will fight for priority over mid so that they have easy access to the river because no one wants to go through those narrow choke points. And what you then need to leverage is the power of your champions to make it as impossible to go through as possible. And Humanoid did a great job. And what I think Pupo is saying here is that Armut wasn't there to help facilitate and support that. And because of that, it then gave Rogue an access and it gave them the opportunity to get a perfect team fight, which is what they were looking for and started the snowball of the game. I think it was a little bit of hesitation on Armut's side. I think he had the right idea. He was trying to come in from behind to throw them into the wall, but maybe the nerves kicking in a little bit here, making him hesitate and uh, Rogue pounce. Me, yeah, exactly, they pounce. That's a great way to say it. And actually, Nar should have pounced in that instance. And uh, you said as well, well, generally, what Rogue has also been doing well is grabbing these Drakes even when it wasn't going too well for them, which puts them, of course, at that point where they get to that fourth Drake. And then this third Drake is so incredibly important. So what's actually really interesting about this is that they managed, they went into top side, got the triple kill, uh, they went topside, traded three for one onto Rogue, like almost like killed them all. Like it was a complete disaster for Rogue in the top side, yep. top side. But in the meanwhile, Inspired was grabbing the second Drake just like that. So coming into the third Drake, the fight we just saw, Rogue wins the fight, picks up the third Drake, and at that point, when you're getting outscaled, 
staring down three drakes, it's not an easy game to play. No, uh, keeping an eye on the big picture, even though it might not be going your way in the early phases of the game from Rogue, something we know, they, they love those fundamentals and they play them so well, Vetti. Uh, now looking at the next game, we had some standout performers on Rogue as well. Uh, the Varus was exceptional from Hans Sama. What are you expecting coming out of the drafting game two with these adaptations? Mad, stay on the blue side. I think the pressure's on Mad Lions, personally, because right now, this NAR pick seems to be a really big deal for me that Odoamne just has answers for. And as long as Rogue keep drafting in a way that allows them to have better team fighting, we know that Mad wants to team fight you. Like what was talking about at the beginning of the day, when Mad get ahead, they like to play through two lanes, funnel resources into a single player, and then like they'll try and group and team fight, right? Whereas Rogue, and they get advantages, they like to spread their advantages across the map. But Rogue is adapting and saying, no, let's not bother. Let's actually just constantly draft towards playing Mad style, but just have a better comp at doing it. I really like the virus pick in this game. They already had so much power in the draft and team fights at Oriana, Hecarim, Rel, first three. All they needed was another champion that could make sure that the Oriana would stay safe. Chain of Corruption, a great tool to stop the enemy team from running into your team, yep. and combined with a Gangplank, it was almost impossible for Mad Lions to death ball into the comp, which is really interesting because they gave away the Alistar. True, actually, when you think about those decisions, when you see it working out, that changes the whole picture. Rogue played it out perfectly, and they are on a roll here in finals weekend as they started the series with a convincing win. We'll see if the Mad Lions can answer back when we return.